Hello everyone, this is Chef Noriak here once again um, to bring you a, another installment of our Cat Builder Toolkit tutorial. So it'll actually be number 7, though it's also kind of like 6.2 in a way, because we are going over interactables once again, because that update I talked about in part 6 happened. And it actually changed the interactables actually a good bit, both in how you can interact with them and the UI setup. It also changed the set UI setup. And because sets are used even more often, we're going to go over those first um, in this year. So as before, you go to Tools and go to Set Manager. Now the Set Manager looks a lot different. Uh, before where it just had, you know, uh, up here and numbers, you couldn't even type it in or move through it. Now it has different um, well, methods of organization. Um, one of the things you will see uh, with uh, new characters, or whenever you log on to a character, they will get an import, uh, which will basically be whatever sets they currently have, because sets are all now account bound, which is really nice. So when you log on to another character, any sets that they had will show up here. Um, if you had named them, given them a name, the name will show up. Um, whether If you hadn't, then it'll just show up as whatever number that it was in there. As you can see from these, these are characters that have logged on, and I haven't organized their particular sets yet. And that's okay. Um, whether it's a character I logged on that had no sets, and so they have that there. And so what we're going to do is going to take that, we're going to remove directory on it. Bam. Um... Okay. Oh no, that's that was rename directory. Excuse me, room for directory. There we go. Now one of the other nice things is uh, about this here is that you know should you um, not want a particular uh, one uh, if or if you, there's something in it, you can't do it. it. Says directory is not empty, so don't worry, you aren't going to accidentally delete one of these. Now when the system first came out, there was a little error there, and a few people were like, um, found out that yes, you could actually, but you can't do that anymore. They fix that. So, yay for Katya. Um, so we're going to remove this little simple one here and remove the directory. Yep, there's two different buttons here, but they work out pretty well for this. Now, what this does um, here, now with the new sets, is basically things can be organized. As you see, I've got one here for kitchen uh, stuff. Um, clicking sometimes in this is a little bit. I don't know if that's me or, or something with the UI. Uh, with it there but basically you click on this and it goes down and you can see your different ones you click on this you then see and this looks a lot like it did before as well too in fact these same buttons are the same before your add um, ability your add ls which is, means add your link set and stuff as well too whether there let's go ahead something here that i can place on this plot without anything so this button still is the same thing as well, too. When you click on it, it tells you what you need in order to make something. And so we're going to make something real quick here. So this won't actually fit with the terrain, but that's okay. Um, it's got a few things in it, so that's why I like it. So, so oh, I should tell again what I'm doing. Um, what is it? What I, in order to place something that you've got in a set, you hit the reload button here. What does that say? Re uh, oh yes. Also, Cat is really good about doing mouse overs. You know, the little pop-ups there. These are really, really important. As it says, recompute the set so the next time you place it appears where you are currently standing. Um, whether there. And there are also, you know, text things that you can type in all the time for this too. Uh, which I'm sure some people use of. I'm more of a point and click, you know, kind of chewer. That's just the way I am. Alright, now we're going to place all in a link. Every so often, you might want to do place all, which means things won't get linked together. Um, there are reasons to do it, but most of the time, I like things linked. It's easy enough to unlink them anyway if you want to as well afterward. So we're going to place all and link. There we go. Boom. All done. We now have a little oven. You know, yes, it's meant to be inset with a counter and stuff, but that's okay. Oh, they there. Little, little oven here. That's going to be our little plaything. And in order to find something again, the good old parent tool so we know where the actual I happen to know it's connected down here um anyway well whatever the first item is in this here will be there so what is used for that so we don't actually want that placed so yeah you can click here to see what would actually be previewed whether there and evidently you can also make something a different parent if you want to as well. But that's good, um, by holding the shift button as well too, So, which can be useful in case you make a set and you don't really want something to be the parent. Oh, that, and you can also place this piecemeal as well. Again, also useful at times. 
but usually place all on link works pretty well. Um, that's alright. Then, reminders of other things on um, here. Well, now that we've got something to uh, say, make here, now we need to go to how to use this new set uh, program. Alright, first off, we're going to, when you first log in uh, to your character with the new um, set tool, you're going to have basically an import and your character name right here. As you can see, I've already been through Noriak and I've got a few directories. But now let's say you want to start organizing that. First off, you're going to need to make a new directory. Um, so let's go ahead here and I'm going to type in kitchen2 because we're, uh, we're going to be dealing with an oven here. So hit enter, hit new directory. That will make a new directory here. Now once you've got that clicked, we want to make an oven. Yep, all typing is done in this one same here, whether it's being done for something here or something here. Now hit new. This will create the new set right here. Now you have the new set. Now we can go ahead and start st adding stuff to this. So in this case, we want to add that oven. So we'll go ahead and I can do add to just do a single item or add LS. We'll add the whole thing and boom. There we go. It's now in here and it's set for that particular location. But if we hit reload, we can of course make it go somewhere else. And that is how you use that. Now you do have sharing, of course, which is useful. Um, you want to import or export um, there. Um, the same thing goes. Now when you are sharing and you're importing, you do need to make sure that you have a blank set up. It's not going to create a set. Like previously, the number was basically where the set was created. Now you do have to go in and manually like create a new set, you know, so like Like oven for you. Yeah. No, if I just hit new here, if I'm in this directory, it will immediately make it into a new set. But if I don't have a directory or a or something in a directory selected, it's going to say it's going to give you an error within there. So I get I can't even get to something not selected at the moment, but that's okay. Oh, they're there. But that is how you, um, and then now I've got something blank, and I could just go ahead and start adding whatever to it, you know, so whether there, or with the sharing in this case, whether there you can import something to, which that's basically the sharing works is, it takes whatever the set is that you have, if you have an, uh, an open set, it'll do this here, you can select it, it'll select everything, you can hit export, um, whether there, like control C to copy it all, um, or if it's a blank one, uh, you can, such as, we're going to remove that there. All right, let's see. But the remove button has actually never worked for me. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but... But... And the, uh, but I just basically hit clear, clear to set, sharing whether there and then you can hit the import button and basically you can copy and paste something in here and that will import. Now one of the other neat things that was added with this series is the uh, transfer and receive. Again you need to have an open set with nothing in it here if you're doing if you are the receiver. Basically what will happen is um, you basically if you click this on so, and basically it's waiting for somebody to hit the transfer button. Basically the person will then, oh, let's see, we can click this off here. Well basically it's putting you in a mode where you're um, ready to receive. Now this is transfers to target player. What it actually is doing is it's sending whispers to the other person. Now it is very important that you are actually friended with this other person. Um, whether they're otherwise the transfer won't work very well. Um, there, so it's, um, and so basically what will happen is, like, if we had somebody else here, I could take, like, this set or whatever, I could target them, and I could hit the transfer button, and if they had receive on, it would start to automatically take that data that I'm whispering to them, whether they're, and, uh, transfer it over into a, um, the open set that they had. And that's how you use transfer and receive very useful all uh, with it there 
for if you don't necessarily want to share and post and that kind of stuff. Um, Kat yourself, he told me that they had actually transferred a 1,000 item set um, to in testing or whatever. And I think it took like nine minutes or something like that. So it's not the fastest process in the world, but uh, the, uh, it is. It does work um, whether they're just so. Just give it time. Uh, other there, and it will do its thing. So it's pretty cool. Other there, and that is the overview of the new sets um, that we have here. And since we don't need this particular ones anymore, we're gonna get rid of them and remove our directory. Um, whether there, and you can of course rename directory. Same kind of thing as the other ones there. So, and you can also rename items. But yeah, this has been um, a. I love this myself because it allows me to keep things a lot more ordered. Whether there. You know what different things uh, that I've got going on. In fact, I even keep backups of some of my locations and everything as well, too, uh, through here. So it's as well, or some of my main items that are I wouldn't necessarily use on a regular basis. All right, now for the other thing here. So we've already talked a little bit on this video. Uh, we are going to go into the interactables portion here. The interactables. Um, okay. We can close off the sets here because we don't need that anymore. The interactables now. There we go. Let's make sure. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I wanted to mouse over this to make sure that hey, it is selectable. Because now one of the nice things before previously, in order to um, select things and everything, you would basically um, have to go in. You'd have to add your trigger state um, and then switch it out. Uh, whether they're you know edit select the item and do everything like that. You don't have to do that anymore. It's really nice. So this, for example, has four different states to it. Um, a state is, you know, I'm um, going to use this as an example here for those, is basically what something is in a different appearance. Whether there, This thing has, you know, four different states. Three different colors. This is its default state here. Now, what we could do with this new one here is, for example, we are going to just plot and we will add each state in directly. There we go. Now they're already added in all in one time here. And now then what we'll be able to do is we'll actually be able to edit and move things around with it there. But since I have a few more things to add, and this is actually really useful because occasionally the game runs into a, uh, an, um, an error where you basically can't select things after you've been doing editing stuff. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and add trigger state for this here because we're going to want something with this over here. There we go. And maybe should you, uh, at some point might add little notes, but at the point you can click on something and it will draw a line to it, which is super useful. That way you know where something is. All right, we're also going to do something with this lever as well too. So we'll add its trigger states as well. There we go. And the other lever, we're not going to do anything with that. Because that was my, uh, in the previous demo, I showed what happens if you um, kind of mess things up a little bit. Uh, there, so, and, yeah, uh, because if you, uh, well, we might test it out again. But, because uh, I do believe you still technically can use this to um, basically have something going over and over again. Here, so we'll test that out at the very end of the video. Basically saying, a you don't want to do this anymore. Because that's what I added the last time. There, so. But let's just go back to how to use these sets. So right now, this is in state zero. So we're going into edit now. In fact, I don't have to go out of edit at this point for anything. All right, we've got extra couch cushions here. Oh wait, oh that's a uh, a ghost item there, and that's because I was placing with the thing trying to move it. Anyways, uh, it's not actually there. Uh, it is, but it isn't. It's a uh, there's actually a fixed ghost. There we go. Uh, that should actually do it. Oh, there's a... Yep, there we go. Fixed ghost. I actually hadn't seen one of that ghost bug happen in quite a while. Alright, so we're going to select state zero, which is what it currently is in. We want the couch to be there. And now, actually, well, here's the nice thing about this is... Boom. Boom. And... Just to give it a little turn. Boom. Yep, that's how easy it is. All right. Now, just to show that this works, I'm going to... Now, you can't... It's not active while edit is on. There we go. 
can see, uh, it is already doing all the movements and everything that I programmed in there. So as I as I change it up here, you can see the color changing. And that's the interactables in a nutshell. Oh, there. But you can have, of course, more fun with it. That's just a showing an example there of what it does with a four set um, item there. Hey, sorry for the jarring video change that you all are probably realizing right now. Was um, we ran into some technical difficulties with the rest of the video, but I've been having requests to make sure that the set portion gets up. Over the end, you got to see a little bit of the interactables there. But there's a few bugs being worked on, and we ran into them in the rest of that video, so I had to cut that. So my apologies for the rest not coming up there. We'll fix that in a future episode. But thank you all for tuning in, and hope you all have enjoyed the video and learned stuff as well, too. And we will see you over in Nexus. So have a good day, cupcakes.